All right, well, <clears throat> past uh, few days I've been working on uh, getting the electronics mounted up a little bit better. Um, this is still more of a temporary solution, but I um, want to be able to get some use out of the mill here shortly. And it's going to take me a while to build a full-blown enclosure for all this stuff. So um, the plywood uh, shield here should get me going. So it's got kind of just a three-sided construction just to uh, shield the internals here from chips. Um, what I'll probably do is just take some shower curtain material and hang it over the front here so I'd still have access to the wiring pretty easily, but also um, protect it from any chips uh, dropping off the table. Um, power supply is what I'm most concerned about down there. Um, any chips got inside there could, could really do some damage. Uh, let's see, what else have we been working on here? Um, doing some work on the PC, getting some configuration set up uh, so that I could use a joystick to control the mill. Uh, got that set up now. And uh, see if I can set up here to show you guys uh, how this works. Alright, I uh, apologize for the crappy angle here, but i got to set this uh, camera up on the workbench so that I can have both hands. Uh, <clears throat> so the way the uh, remote pendant works, um, I basically just took this from the uh, EMC um, wiki site. Um, this is uh, the more advanced configuration they give for the uh, remote pendant. It adds a few functions to the basic, um, basic pendant. But uh, the basics of it are the, uh, the four number keys here control what uh, speed the axis is going to move at. You have to hold one of the number keys down and move the joystick in order to actually get the axis to move. If I just uh, press the button one way or the other, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, but if I press one of the number buttons... Okay, so number one is the slowest speed, so I can kind of creep around and uh, move up very slowly on something. Uh, the number two is kind of the medium speed. Tops out at about 20 inches per minute. I think the lowest is about four inches per minute. Uh, number three is the rapid. Uh, this one tops out at about 50 inches a minute. And the four is actually an incremental jog. Uh, you hold down the four and you move it, and it uh, moves in one thousandth of an inch increments. So you can hear it just kind of clicking, um, moving just a few steps at a time there to uh, to move the screw just uh, for one thousandth of an inch of movement. And so that's all my movement functions. Um, this, the number ten button. If you hold that down and uh, press any of the axis uh, movement uh, directions on the uh, joystick and it will zero your tool at the current position. Um, and you can set it up for the radius of your uh, edge finder so that you just automatically uh, zero in right at that particular spot. Um, and it's the coordinates are already set for where they should be. Uh, this button over here is the emergency stop. Um, hit and it will stop the mill. Uh, now I have a physical e-stop button too, but you know if this is in my hand then it might be handy just to have, a, have the e-stop right here in my hand. Um, on the back side there is a, another safety switch that has to be held down and then you can activate um, the spindle with one of these. Now I don't have the spindle hooked up to the controller right now so it doesn't really do anything. And then these other two buttons haven't been assigned for any particular um, function. And finally the hat switch here is um, my feed override. So pressing the hat switch in this direction um, changes my uh, my feed override downward. Um, changing, pushing the button in this direction um, changes it upward. I'm up to I think 130 percent of the uh, program speed. And then the up and down button are your spindle override. So if you've got a spindle speed set in the uh, in the G code, you can actually override that, and uh, same kind of 
same kind of scenario. You can drop it down to less than what the program speed is, or uh, you can speed it up to over 100% of the uh, original program speed. And uh, let's see, this over here controls the z-axis. Uh, that's not hooked up or anything, so it doesn't do anything. And then the side-to-side uh, -side would control a rotary axis. Um, but gives me a pretty uh, pretty handy capability to move the move the table around and not have to use the jog keys on the uh, keyboard. And uh, so I should now be able to fairly easily position stuff um, using this and zero off on it and uh, not have to really go to the keyboard to do a whole heck of a lot. So that that'll be a good thing. Um, next up is uh, probably twofold. I'm going to be working on getting the x-axis um, sliding back and forth this direction. I need to get a motor um, and I need to get the, the hardware all finished up for that. And then probably concurrently with that I'll be working on getting an enclosure uh, for the PC because <clears throat> I want to uh, I want to obviously keep the chips and flying debris off of the, uh, the computer so I'm going to need to build some kind of cabinet for it. And uh, I'll probably get a rolling tool cart of some kind and just set the computer cabinet on top of the tool cart and that'll be the, uh, that'll be the basic setup here. Um, I have a PC tower that is actually going to uh, enclose all of this, um, all the electronics down here, and then I'm going to seal that up pretty good um, to keep any kind of coolant or um, any chips from getting in inside. And that'll be a little bit nicer enclosure than the, uh, the plywood monstrosity I put together here. But for now, this works, and uh, I think it'll keep the I think it'll keep the chips off there pretty decently once I get the the curtains hung on it to uh, to kind of close up the, the sides a little bit. But that's where it's at.